A spinner yields three equally likely outcomes, one, two, and three. If the random variable x denotes the product of the outcomes of the two spins, find the probability mass function f of x, the probability x equals six, and the probability x is less than or equal to six. The matrix given below here has the results of the first spin denoted by the rows and those outcomes are 1, 2, and 3 which are equally likely. And the results of the second spin denoted by the columns and that is again 1, 2, and 3. The entries in the matrix are the product of the outcomes of the two spins and they range from 1 to 9. So when I'm writing down the probability mass function f of x, I start with the support. And in this case, the support can be x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 9. The probability that the product of the two outcomes is 1 is 1 in 9 because all 9 of these outcomes are equally likely. The product, the probability that the product is a 2 is 2 ninths. The probability that the product is a 3 is also 2 ninths. The probability that the product is a 4 is 1 ninth. The probability that the product is a 6, which of course can be done by getting a 3 on the first spin and a 2 on the second spin, or a 2 on the first spin and a 3 on the second spin. That is again 2 ninths. And finally, the probability of getting a 9 for the product is 1 ninth. The probability that x is equal to 6 corresponds to these two outcomes right here and that's also f of 6 which turns out to be 2 ninths. To calculate the probability that x is less than or equal to 6 what we want to do is add up the values of the probability mass function for all values associated with 6 and below and that total is 8 ninths. To draw a graph of this probability mass function, here is some R code. The vector x gets set to the support values 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 9. The vector f gets set to the probability mass function values we calculated on the previous page. And then the plot command with the argument type equals h will plot these as spikes. And there is the view of the probability mass function. Two things happen here that didn't happen in the previous examples. First of all, there's lots more ups and downs here than in the previous cases, many of which were a little bit smoother than this. The other thing that happens is you get a couple gaps. 5, 7, and 8 are not possible products, and so there are gaps in the pro probability of mass function at those values.